Alright guys, so I have now had my Gargoyle Gecko for over, well, just basically a week. And today I'm going to figure, basically tell you guys what problems I've had, what things maybe I've watched in a video that might not be that correct and stuff. So, yeah. The thing I bought was this. This is a Zoomed thermometer. It is absolutely amazing. It's accurate. I've tested it in a freezer. Um, yeah, freezer. Um, just keeping it out in room temperature. And just a whole load of things that I can test this to make sure it is correct. And this was accurate. Alright, this. This is the Exoterra um, hygrometer. It is not that accurate. I've only seen it twice or so go down in temperature. So you, you aren't that good. But mm, I've just stick to a basis this. Usually spraying it maybe in the afternoon. Basically a little bit in the morning and mainly in the afternoon. Because if you didn't know with gargoyle geckos, they kind of do need a steady drop. They don't want it the same temp um, same humi mm, humidity the whole day. Right, so I've been feeding my gargoyle gecko Pangea, watermelon, and mango. And basically, here it is. It's quite good, but I don't have any um, basically small ish moving spoon like spoons so i had to i spent about i think three or four hours driving to tesco's as the pound shop and everywhere to find like little spoons because i don't use the exoterra calcium or d3 so i went to poundland and i finally all right guys so here are they this is, I think it's a 5 millilitres or 1 8 teaspoon, this one is. This is the one I use for the powder. Or you could use what this is, is, no, this is 0 0.5 millilitres. This is 1.2 millilitres, what is 1 fourth of a tablespoon. But these are the ones I use, so if I'm doing it, I'll do usually one or two spoons of the one spoon of this or two spoons of this with a bit of water and that's literally what I do um that's good but I've this I've, this part has been filmed about two hours because my battery has just died like and it's just got enough charge but I'm going to show you something quickly it's a pashi I don't know if you can see this really but to me well, basically, to me, this has been eaten a bit more. If you can see, there's a bit more holes. And if you, what I found is, for the first week I had it, basically about five days or so, I it, I found it really hard. For the most times, I did think it had escaped. But as sooner I had it and longer I had it, I've seen, like, I can identify it really easily so if I because I know it's hiding spots is usually a lot of the time on the ground and as you can see from my last video I have changed the bedding to um just I think it's forest bedding or something but it's the same bedding I use for my ball pythons but let it focus in a bit but I have still kept a layer of Eco Earth because even though this covers it up, this bit still gives it the humidity it needs because this stuff alone won't give it humidity. I can tell you that now. But as I next time I add probably a bit less of a layer of Eco Earth, but it's just covered up so you can still get basically the humidity layer or just keeps the water because if you just put this this will make all the water go to the bottom and it won't do good so as i've added this it 
basically stops him from ingesting anything. But I'm speaking really low now because right now my gargoyle gecko is looking at its food bowl. I'm going to see if I can get it eating. Probably nothing, but. So if you can't identify it, there is my gargoyle gecko. There it is, and please, please message. I got no one messaging in my last video. If you know what Morphis is, please tell me. When it fires up, it's more of a darkish, reddish colour. So I'm thinking it might be a red stripe or something. I don't know the exact names, but that's what I'm calling it. This, oh, turn around. This thing, it's getting mould. Like, you you can see like that white stuff that just stuff isn't there normally that is like mold and so I think it's just I'm going to I'm going to a reptile shop tomorrow so I might pick up some new equipment maybe some actual nice stuff because I've got I've got a load of money because I had like a 300 pound budget for Doncaster to get a gecko and funny enough when my dad owned, ordered his new phone he got a 60 pounds Amazon gifts um, Amazon gift card so we have that and for calcium powder because right now my crick my gargoyle gecko hasn't really been eating a lot of this but oh sorry if I'm not like talking but this is very exciting for me because I've never seen it eat but the calcium I'm using is a mixture between Nutribulls, um, calcium and Nutribulls, like, I don't know what it's called, mixed vitamins or something. It's eating a bit, it's eating a bit. Oh my god. This is the first time I've actually seen it eat. Oh, this is amazing. I'm sorry if I'm doing this, like, weird or anything, but this is amazing. I've never seen it eat. I'm gonna. Oh wow, guys, this was so exciting for me because I, for a while, I didn't think it was eating, and it was actually getting really on my nerves for a few nights. I think I went to bed at eleven o'clock, and like at half twelve, I couldn't cope. I was like so worrying, but this is amazing, guys. I'm sorry, this is probably gonna be a two-minute clip, but if you don't know if your geckos are eating. Just leave it a while, but because look, you just saw it lick a bit and it still did eat some. They don't eat a lot, but wow. All right, now I'm going to cut to the chase and the main part. All right, so what I've been feeding it recently is obviously you've seen it eat the Pangea thing, but I'm also feeding it obviously. I can't get it to focus. Now it's coming over your food. I'm feeding it my gecko medium small, small crickets and two bits of cucumber just cut up for them to gut load. And I've put about 10 crickets in. And as you can see now, none of them are jumping around. So I reckon it's eating them, and it is in shed by the looks of it, because it's since I got it, you can tell it's a bit more palish. And basically, I used a mixture of calcium because basically it gives them a good stuff. Because I don't want to give them pure calcium if they didn't do any D3 and stuff. But the light bulb I'm using is a Exoterra dome, basically, with a I won't show you the light because it's very blinding. Is a 5.0 or 0 0.5 let me just check turn it off it's a pot of 5.0 if you can't tell I don't know if you can see it but it's 5.0 anyway but that's the bowl I'm using and if you didn't know, UVB is very beneficial to your gecko. It helps them up so incredibly much. You don't need it, but it, especially with babies, it helps with them getting strong, nice bones. 
and stuff and it's really good my gecko's now climbing and for watering i bought i have a big spray if you haven't seen in my other videos but i found that was a bit too powerful for the cage like the water was just immediately going and everything so i i this is no brand i got it from basically just a normal hardware shop or tesco's or anywhere you can buy them from it's 0 0.5 litres and for what I paid for it, I paid like £2 I think it was, it has done its job amazingly. This hygrometer was 4 99 and this is just amazing. Just get it, get one, it's so much better than, I would recommend a bit like it, maybe the Exoterra, not obviously the brand but the pump up one just spray but the big one i think it's nine liters it's a bit too powerful because i use it for filling up water bowls what i do recommend is you don't have to have it but i i would i would recommend you guys get one it's not necessary but if you've got the extra money i would definitely go for one it is basically just sorry about the dodginess it is literally just a water bowl. I know it's got a bit of eco earth, but I'll change it out tonight, tomorrow. But even if you, it's just a necessary option. Even though it says it's not, I recommend it for sure. Because first of all, if your gecko can't spray water, some geckos, gargle geckos, jahias, all geckos, they some they, well they will necessary if they can't can't because it's their natural instincts to find water they will actually they i've seen actually my gargle gecko get a bit of water from this even though they were sprayed and everything also what i found was absolutely amazing for what i paid for it this is a room heater it is a thermostat and everything and basically we got this on monday we got the gecko on sunday and basically this has been the best investment ever. First of all, it keeps our room at room temperature all times of the day. It's nice, especially as it's going into winter, it'll be nice. All my gecko, I realise all my animals are a bit more active than usual because they've got a bit more heat and they like walking around their cage. I obviously still find them in their hot, hot, hot spot and they're loving it. This keeps the room at between about 70 degrees Fahrenheit between and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you didn't know, that's the right temperature for your gargoyle gecko. And it's amazing this. It turns on any time of the day or night to make sure it stays up that temperature. And I have never seen it. I have done a test at night, in the morning, in the afternoon with this. And it's always stayed between 70 and 80 degrees. And this is amazing. And I could wish nothing better from it. But I recommend you get like the stuff I've said, like the heater, the thermometer, and obviously get some plants. These plants have held up really well. This log, amazing. This I would not recommend because it is starting to rot and it's not like rot, like the wood's falling apart, like just grow some mould over it. And personally, I don't like it. But this is the Exoterra 30 Cube, if you can't tell. And basically, this is a very good buy. I know people say, no, oh, it's a bit too small and everything. But this cage is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant for baby gargle geckos, crested geckos, and probably jahiu geckos. I know they get a bit bigger, so maybe, maybe you want to start them off in a tub. But maybe a bit bigger a tub. Because I know you can't really get tubs this size. But this cage is amazing. In Doncaster or after Doncaster. I am getting a. The next size up. What is I think it's. I don't know what it is. But it's taller and it's the next size up. And that will be my next buy. And obviously I'll be buying much more plants for it. Maybe some. I'm thinking of getting some cork hollows to replace this. And a load of other stuff to make this cage amazing. And you know with my gargoyle, my leopard geckos, they've got kitchen wire and everything. And everyone says, oh, and stuff, like this bedding is good, you should use it. But in the term, there's not a lot of ex good quality stuff that I think personally is safe. Because we all, 
all got personal opinions and that's just mine but this animal I want to be my display animal when I'm older or when this is, gets a bit bigger I do want to do an actual proper display like I want to get the Exoterra, the biggest one they sell, put tons of plants, live planted, maybe bioactive, and get all that good stuff in it, and put the Gargo Gecko in it. I might even get another one when I'm older, because I have, everyone says these Gargo Geckos are jumpy, no, they're not, well, personally, my one isn't, it, I think, it has bit me once, I don't blame it for that, because, I don't know why, but the way I handled it or something, I think it was like, it didn't like me how I was doing it because I was like scooping up and I think when I came over it to scoop it, I think it just went mad. But, it's good. I have picked it up from the log there, put it in my finger, climbed all the way up my finger and then back and then I latched it onto the plant and it just stayed on my finger onto the plant for maybe five minutes and then started climbing onto the plant. I've weighed it, it's 4 grams, hasn't gone up, hasn't gone down, but we've seen it eating so I know it's going to start going up. But there's nothing really bad to say. I'll probably be doing a mumps update on the gecko, see how it's going. And please leave a message about the morph and stuff because I'd really like to know if it's an... I know 100% it's not a normal. Like, come on, a normal doesn't look like that. But I know it does fire up to a bit of a reddish colour and it's really nice. But the firing up stuff's getting a bit new to me and stuff. Because if you didn't know, I keep like leopard geckos and stuff. Not the stuff that fires up, but I couldn't have wished anything better. But I would recommend this for before crested geckos. Because I know people will be like, oh, I'll get a crested gecko first. You have to be passionate about crested geckos, I think, first. Like, you have to like them. You can't get a gargoyle gecko and not really like a crusty gecko. Because it'll be a bit weird. But, I do love gargoyle geckos. I was thinking of getting a crested gecko before, but, mmm. I've always preferred gargoyle geckos. For someone who doesn't want something that gets a bit smaller. If you don't want something, like, really small, like, smallish. I would recommend you get a gargoyle gecko. They get a bit bigger. And in my opinion, their attitude is more, like, good and stuff. Because I've handled, like, five gargoyle geckos and they're always jumpy. Every time I hold them, they're always jumpy. My gargoyle gecko is just chilled, relaxed and happy. But other than that, I've got nothing bad to say about anything else. But one thing I don't like is this. You're my worst enemy. This is a good product for jelly pots but I'm using I'm not using jelly pots because if you don't know they're really high in sugar and stuff that you don't really want to be feeding your gargoyle gecko crusty gecko that type of stuff but other than that nothing else but I think when I'm getting in Doncast I am going to get a magnetic ledge don't know which one but I will be getting maybe a rock magnetic ledge but for my plans in the future is obviously to get this bigger cage, do a bioactive setup, uh, do a naturalistic setup with live plants and everything, and probably make a, its own background because I do like this background. I do prefer the Exoterra jungle setup. It's like got the rock and the nice green and brownish background and stuff. I do like that, but I would like to make my own one, you know, with cork and everything do some actually inbuilt hides into the cork maybe stick a cork there and let it be a, like maybe let it be in and out maybe something really nice because with as I said before this cage is going to be a display cage like when it's bigger and stuff it's going to be really nice so basically that's it the only message I got for the names was Scully I uh, no Sally I do like the name but I do want to get a bit more ver variety, maybe just for a boy or girl. Because Scully is usually maybe a bit more to the boy's side than girl's side. Because I don't know the sex of it. You can't really tell. Like with geckos, it's obvious to tell when they're nine months old. With crested geckos and gargoyle geckos, it's usually round about the six month area. So I don't know really. But it does look a bit like a male because it does have little paws on the side of it. 
I don't care what sex it is, it's not going to be a breed or anything. But it's absolutely amazing. I do love gargle geckos. And I've got a friend who's got a gargle gecko. And I've actually got a friend who actually has a chameleon. He's new and he, in our school and stuff, but he's really cool. But I would like to get another gargle gecko soon. Not no, not that soon, like in the future, because I'm gonna give you some bad news or if you don't want to. Oh well. I won't be getting any more reptiles for a long time or a while. Because if you didn't know, this room is my dad's bedroom and I keep all my reptiles in it because my room's too small. But this room is basically full. One side is full up and this side and this side is basically full up because the only power socket is here what leads what it leads to behind the bed and that's full up so there's no more power sockets even that extension is I think it's a 12 or 6 I don't know what it is but that's plugged in with everything like light not lights heat pads other things random things and stuff but we are overwhelmed with plugs and sockets and stuff so to keep it safe like if we add any more it might not be that safe like could cause a fire and stuff that's why we're keeping it to a minimum but yeah there'll be no more reptiles for a while until at least i can get either a reptile room what i think might be coming soon but when that happens i'll be glad because then my collection will actually have bigger cages and everything like over the top cages like instead of them being like my ball pythons in a three foot by three foot i think it is it's gonna be getting into maybe like a four foot long and stuff i just need the extra room and soon that will definitely be coming and everything will get a bigger cage even citrus is getting a cage before doncaster everything's gonna work out so please like and subscribe and don't forget to message about what morph you think this is and message about any names you want but just so you know as well i am going to doncaster on the 18th and i hope to see you guys you guys there and don't be worried to come over and talk to me i've already got one guy who said if you see me you're coming over and if you're watching this video thanks can't wait to see you there but don't be scared or anything to come around i am i am excited to see some of you guys if you're watching my videos and stuff and I will be doing a pickup video, but obviously it won't have any live animals on unless I go mental and get something else and have to find out where I put it. But that'll cause some planning. But please like and subscribe this video. Um, I'm right now on 107 subscribers, so please can we try to get up that to 110? I don't really usually do let, um, subscriber goals or like goals, but. I think it's a special occasion because I'm hyped because I just saw my gargoyle gecko eat a tinsy wincy bit. So please like and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!